Good morning. Welcome back. Yeah, two days in a row. Yeah. <clears throat> this morning we're going to continue where we left off in Matthew 14. Uh, Jesus and his disciples have just prepared a place for the Passover feast on the first day of Unleavened Bread, and we're going to see uh, how that feast goes. Uh, before we do that, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, dear God, uh, we thank you for your love and your mercy for us. Lord, we thank you for uh, these wonderful temperatures, uh, though that seems like it's going to drop. We've enjoyed the, the small amount of warmth we had for the past few days. Lord, I thank you uh, for your word, and Lord, I thank you uh, for going to the cross for us as we are about to see as we get uh, through the end of Mark here. We pray this in your name. Amen. So we're starting in verse 17 and going to verse 31. Yep. <clears throat> when evening came, he arrived with the twelve. Uh, while, they were, were, while they were reclining and eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one by one, Surely not I. <clears throat> he said to them, it is one of the twelve, the one who is dipping bread in the bowl with me. For the Son of Man will go, just as it is written about him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for him if he had not been born. As they were eating, he took bread, blessed, and broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly, I tell you, I will no longer drink of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. After singing a hymn, they went out to the Mountain of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will fall away, because it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter told him, Even if everyone falls away, I will not. Truly I tell you, Jesus said to him, Today, this very night, before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he kept insisting, If I have to die with you, I will never deny you. And they all said the same thing. Great. Well, let's unpack. Yeah. So, I think in this passage, there's like a... There's a clear... Jesus is saying, these things are going to happen. And the disciples are like, no, 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 that won't happen. We promise that would never happen. Um, yeah, there's kind of, there's this tension between uh, Jesus's predictions and what the, the disciples think are going to happen. And yeah, so I, I think we should just kind of keep in the back of our mind, I said it right at the very beginning, that this is like day one of the unleavened bread so it's this is a pretty pretty big deal in jewish culture this mm -hmm. whole this whole supper that they're having is a pretty big deal um but with that in the back of the mind they get to this place and they sit down <laughs> and the first thing that we see recorded i don't, presumably they've had some other talk and whatnot but the first thing that mark records mm -hmm. at this feast mm -hmm. is jesus claiming that one of the disciples is going to betray him um, so that must have been pretty jarring for mm -hmm. the disciples, considering they've just spent a whole bunch of time following Jesus all over the place. Mm -hmm. um, I guess, well, it says they were distressed. Um, what, what are your thoughts about Jesus' revelation that one of them is about to betray him? Yeah, I, yeah, I just think about how shocking that must have been. You're sitting around and you're enjoying your having dinner together, have, having this special, um, um, like, cele that's not part of it's celebratory. Um, it's like memorial. Too. Yeah, so you're, you're having this meal, you're observing this, um, this feast, and all of a sudden, the guy who's been leading you is like, oh yes, one of you is going to betray me. Like, I don't, it's just very interesting, um, and I understand why they would be distressed, because for them, for most of them, they're very committed to Christ at this point. They have seen what he can do, and they're eager to continue following him. And, I mean, we've seen in the past couple chapters that any time Jesus would say, like, I have to die, or the Son of Man is going to die, or 
anything regarding his death, they all are like, oh, no, 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 you're not. Um, but they just really don't seem to understand um, yeah. the purpose. So as a reader, from a literary standpoint, we already know that this is going to happen because mm -hmm. we saw before that Judas was planning on doing this. Mm -hmm. So we actually know from a, from a reading standpoint, before the disciples do, that Jesus is about to betrayed, be betrayed. So they get super distressed and then... Uh, they deny it, but he, he kind of drills it in even more. He says, it's one of the 12, uh, so the 12 disciples. Maybe there are more people with him, but it says that there were the 12 with him up up there eating. It says, the one that's dipping the bowl, uh, dipping the bread of the bowl, uh, for the Son of Man will go just as it is written about him, but woe to the man uh, whom the Son of Man will be betrayed. Uh, it would have been better for him not to have been born. So, he he just gently tells them that someone's going to betray them. They deny it. And then he less gently tells them yeah. <laughs> that this is a big deal. That whoever is going to do it, um, it would have been better for that person to not have been born. Um, but he also said that it was required to fulfill his mission. So it says, for the Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. Mm -hmm. So uh, this was the plan, that someone was going to betray him. Yeah, so he's kind of saying, like, yeah, this is going to happen, and I'm going to go just as, like, things are going to play out, but the consequences are serious. Um, like, you be would be better not to be born. I can't imagine Judas sitting there hearing this, knowing this, and he'd be like, Jesus just told me it's better for me not to be born. Like, whoa. <laughs> but it's it's reality. It's the truth that if he's going to betray Christ, um, that that's pretty awful, but I think you made a key point there of like, we'll go just as is written about him, that yeah, this was awful for um, Judas to do, but it had to happen. Um, it wasn't, I don't think Jesus was hoping here at this point that Judas would stand up and be like, it's me, I'm the one who's going to betray you, but I don't want to do it anymore. Like, he's still going to do it because he kind of has to do it so that all of this can be fulfilled. Yeah, in, in other recordings, uh, in other Gospels, it uh, it, show, it has Jesus actually um, identifying uh, Judas and then telling him to go do what he has to do. Uh, we don't get that here mm -hmm. in, in Mark, so he kind of just skips over it <laughs> and, and moves to what we call the Lord's Supper or Communion. Mm -hmm. and it says, as they were eating, uh, he took the, the bread and blessed it. He said, take this, <clears throat> take it, this is my body. Uh, he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave them and drank it, and he said to them, this is my blood of the covenant, which was poured out for many. And so, yeah, if you read other Gospels, there, this is actually more in-depth. We see Jesus speaking more. Uh, Mark keeps it very short here. Um, he says, take it, this is my body, uh, take this, my blood of the covenant, uh, and then he says, uh, "Truly, I tell you, I no longer drink of the fruit of the vine." You gotta read slower. I can't. I can't understand. Truly, I tell you, I will no longer drink of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. They always run over time. I'm trying to. I know. Show. I know. But then nobody can understand what you're reading. There's a. They can watch it at like point seven five speed. Yeah. Well, you don't have to pre speed it up for them. Oh, uh, what do you what do you think about? <laughs> Uh, th this Lord's Supper, we actually don't, we actually don't see it being you know instituted here. We just see it happening. Whereas mm -hmm. in the other the other uh, gospels, so I forget which one, it actually tells them to like oh, as often as you do this, do yeah. this in remembrance, or as often as you do this. Right. As well. This is just saying this is what they were doing. I think it's it's short and it brings to light. Um, I think it goes along with that. The, the Passover that's been set up, that this is the Passover, and just before, um, what we were reading yesterday was about um, uh, da -da -da -da. Jesus was talking about, like, that this woman who poured the perfume on him was preparing her for burial. And then here again, this is my body, and this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. This is, like, continuing the, the steps of the ritual of atonement and sacrifice um that there's just like way too many points here that are um mirroring and 
replicating what's in the Old Testament about sacrifices and death and burial, um, that his blood is going to be poured out. Um, and yeah, that's just, so we really see, it's really setting him up as the sacrificial lamb. Yeah. And if we remember from the very beginning when we started, Mark, one of the things that we were saying is that, um, Mark seeks to identify who Christ is and what, essentially what his mission is. And so he, the way he inks his, um, his gospel is to continue to drive that point home. And that's why I don't, that's why I think he is going, he's more, he's going more quickly in the way that he's describing these events more so helps kind of drive home the point of what his mission is. Cause he very quickly, uh, glosses over the betrayal part. Uh, whereas other Gospels go into more detail. So basically saying that this is what's going to happen and that, that this is what's written about me. And then with the Lord's Supper, it talks about this this sacrifice, this his body and blood. It's a, it's a sacrifice, which we learn is uh, about the Passover. So Jesus, so more furthering this, this mission. And we don't see a lot of detail as we do in other Gospels. And then so we move on and we see... Jesus uh, predicts that Peter, and not only Peter, uh, will all scatter and deny him. Mm-hmm. And so he he quotes, uh, what is it, Zechariah. Mm-hmm. He says, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. Mm-hmm. Um, Zechariah 13, if I remember correctly when I looked it up. Um, there's a... Okay, Kate's going to look. Yeah, so he quotes that, and then he says, But after I've risen, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. And so Peter, he says, If everyone falls away, I will not. So basically tells Jesus, that's not going to happen. And Jesus comes back again. So so we see we see this happen twice. Uh, once for the betrayal, Jesus says something. He gets denied. And then he comes back again. Um... <laughs> A little less gently so so truly I tell you today this very night before the rooster crows twice you will deny me three times so he gets even more specific mm-hmm. so first he just tells them that they're gonna they're gonna scatter and um, Peter denies it and then he comes back and says this is how it's gonna happen too mm-hmm. uh, you're gonna deny me three times and Peter kept insisting it's not going to happen he says if I die uh, if you have to die if I have to die with you I will never deny you. And then it says the rest of the disciples, they did the same thing. Mm-hmm. Do you have any, any thoughts about that little this denial um, section? Yeah. Uh, well, I think it's, it's bringing me back to how just uh, the passage we read previously to this, Jesus said, okay, you're going to go into the city and you're going to find this and this and this and this and this and it's going to happen exactly as I say. And they go and it happens exactly as he said. We've identified that this has happened before, and so here it happens again. Jesus is saying, this is how things are going to go down, and the disciples are like, nah, that won't happen, that won't happen. But we've already seen evidences of him doing this already, so why they still don't believe Jesus um, is intriguing, but kind of understandable too, because they really want to show their loyalty to Christ. Um... Particularly as opposed to somebody just hearing that one of them is going to betray them. None of them really want to be it. Um, But, yeah, they have good motivation, but they don't, but their hearts are still um, sinful. Because we all are. And we know later that they will deny him. Um, But, yeah. um, Yeah, one something that's interesting about Jesus quoting scripture here is that he's he is telling them that this has to happen in order to fulfill scripture so he's saying that you guys are going to be scattered you're gonna all um fall away is the word term he uses here but the reason he says that he says because it is written I will strike you like so he's saying the reason that they will be scattered is because scripture said so and it will fulfill scripture mm-hmm. <laughs> and their response is that's no no no, no that won't happen right. so it's, it's kind of funny to me as a reader <laughs> saying that jesus said it's going to happen because it needs to fulfill scripture mm-hmm. 
that they're supposed to know. <laughs> and he, they said, no, that's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. Which is similar back in verse 21 when it said, for the Son of Man will go just as it, as it is written about him. So we're, like I was saying, we're seeing this um, fulfillment. Jesus is like mirroring the sacrificial lamb and, and burial rituals um, here in the way, things that he's doing. Like he clearly knows what he's doing and what his purpose is. And what it's about and the and he's trying to tell the disciples but the disciples are like nah 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 it's not gonna happen but he's doing so much of this and all of these things that are playing out are playing out in the way so that scripture will be fulfilled so that christ can come and die on the cross for our sin so that all of this can be fulfilled <clears throat> and i guess that uh, no i'm not gonna say that that's not true never mind <laughs> um yeah, so we see this twice happen in the section that we read that Jesus um, said that the reason that these things are happening is because that's what's written. That scripture needs to be fulfilled, which is part of what Jesus is here to do, is to fulfill uh, scripture. And we see that happen twice in this, this little section. Once in the betrayal, and also once when his disciples are all going to fall away. Uh, do you have any application about this, this little section? Um, uh, I don't know. Um, do you have something? Um, well, I guess for, um, one, one takeaway for, for me is that, um, Jesus is fulfillment of of the old testament scripture mm -hmm. and so <laughs> that's good news for us especially considering that the old testament can sometimes be hard to to read through mm -hmm. and that we don't an easier to, it's not so easy to care about but jesus is saying that it is important and the reason that i'm doing these things is because of the old testament mm -hmm. so that's that's one application is to know that that jesus is the fulfillment of the, the Old Testament, mm -hmm. and that's one of the things that he's here to do. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. I guess an implication of that is to know the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it helps us see Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and you get to understand a lot more intricacies of the, mm -hmm. of the New Testament. Um, yeah. Um, I guess an application that I'm thinking about is, is that concept that Jesus is saying these things are going to be happened to fulfill scriptures and the disciples keep denying that um, I'm just thinking about other times of scripture when we pretty much shouldn't be surprised that what scripture says is happening um, such as in the some later letters from Paul and whatnot um, in the New Testament when he's talking about like do not be surprised by trials do not be surprised by these things like this is how the world is and this is ha what God's plan is that we shouldn't hear those things or hear um, about God's plan or any of it and just be like oh yeah but no like that's that doesn't need to happen that's not real because it it is it's in scripture Christ has said it Christ has said that this will happen that we will suffer we will have trials um, the Christ did have to die Christ did die for us like Anything that scripture says to deny what it says is um, just wrong. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm thinking about. Yeah, that's good. And um, I guess just one more th thing that I found interesting is that right in between these two very sad and somber uh, predictions that Jesus has, it says they sang a hymn together, so mm -hmm. it's just I found that interesting that they were singing together between these two really somber, sad things, betrayal and then all the disciples leaving. Um, yeah, so that's that's all I have. I would love to hear what your thoughts are. What do you take away from this passage? What do you find interesting? What do you find hard? Um, yeah, if anyone else you think. Uh, would need to or want to he to hear this go ahead and share it uh, Kate would you like to pray us out mm -hmm. 
Uh, dear Lord, thank you so much for your scriptures. Thank you for the opportunity to read them, um, study them deeply, um, seek your wisdom and guidance, um, and even share our um, thoughts publicly. Uh, Lord, would you remind us of um, your greater plan um, that though it might seem hard or we don't want to believe what your plan has to tell us that you had to die or that we would betray you or deny you or anything else in our lives where we um, don't uh, we don't understand why you we have why you say something happens or why something does happen um, that we don't we don't see the good in Lord would you help us to um, trust in you trust in your greater plan um, to know that um, you do everything for um, to bring about knowledge and bring about redemption through Christ um, yeah I pray this on all those listening and those beyond um, and I pray all this in your name amen, amen. All right. well you will talk to Brian for the rest of the week so see you guys later